If we wanted to continue with this with other types of generators, I could yet again create another fill layer long as it's underneath our folder. And I want this to be metal and I want it to be slightly rough. I want it to be just a little bit like this and I want it to be like a darker metal. Okay, so get that roughness a little, there we go right there. I'm going to, this is gonna be named our metal wear. And this is our dirt layer, dirt proc, which is procedural. And now in the metal wear, I'm going to add a black mask, right click, add a generator, hit this. And now I'm gonna choose metal edges again. And now what we're getting is we're getting metal edges that are actually showing wear and showing the underneath metal, which is great. And I don't want it to be that contrasted. I want it just a little bit. And one thing that I want to do is take this rust layer and drag it above all of it. And now we're getting a little bit of rust. It's a little too dark for my taste. So what I'm going to do is go to color and I'm going to re reduce the color just a little bit. You can also change the color on the base. So there we go. A little bit of rust. We got a little bit of that metal coming through and I don't think it's shiny enough. So I'm going to come back in here to adjust the, sh the roughness of that metal. There we go. You can see the difference. And this is why it's non-destructive because I can always go back and edit. And I think that actually my height in our rust layer is a little too much. So I'm going to actually reduce this height. Good. Yep, a little too much. Okay. Now say I wanted to edit something a little bit more custom rather than just use the very few procedural things that you saw. We can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and add a fill layer. I don't want a color. I don't want roughness. I don't want metal or normal. I just want to add scratches. So I'm going to go ahead and go negative. So I want the scratches to go in. I'm going to write oh, before that. Let's go ahead and name this. Is proc. I like to name everything that's procedural or by hand. I'm going to go into here. I'm going to add a black mask. You're going to right click again. You're going to go down to add generator. <clears throat> Instead of choosing from these I'm going to go down to mask editor. It's going to take a quick second, but once we have the mask editor in here, it's basically going to apply a mask over this. So the first thing we want to do within our properties within the mask editor generator is go to our texture opacity and we're going to turn this all the way up. This is going to show which of the maps that we baked in are being affected. Is it affecting ambient occlusion? curvature right now it looks like it's affecting curvature and we can edit that world normal position thickness what maps are being edited so since we turned texture opacity all the way up to one so it's the viewable map uh, the viewable texture we're going to come down here to image inputs and we're going to go into texture now in here we have all of the stuff that exists within our shelf up here we have alphas, grunges. We can see all these grunges. So what we're gonna do is use one of these grunges to layer something on here. So within our mask, within our texture, I wanna use scratches, scratches. So now that I started typing in scratch, all of the things came up. And we can see we have a very dirty scratch. And black is going to be not affected, white is gonna be affected. So I'm actually liking that. So I'm gonna click it. And now you can see that the depth of those scratches has been put in, but I don't like what it looks like. So I can come down here. Some of these actually are generated so we can actually adjust the number of tiling. Good, we can do the width. Do I want it to be wide? Do I want it to be shallow? The length, the masking, do I want dirtiness? Do I want dust intensity? Okay, maybe a little dust. And then I can also come up here to my actual texture and I can scale this. How, how much sc scratches do I want? The brightness, do I wanna use triplanar? And I do, or I don't, nope, I don't. So triplanar, I would have to adjust the scale to give me what I'm looking for in triplanar. There we go. So now that I have this, without doing any manual labor, all procedurally, I have created maps and that is how masks and generators work. And something that I want to do is I don't really like 
how uniform this is. You can see the same thing repeating on it. So I don't like that. So what I'm going to do here is create a folder and we're going to call this scratch mask folder. I'm going to drag the scratches in here and I'm going to add a white mask. Now they're still there. So I have different options now. I can go to my brushes and I can go to dirt and I can go into our scratch and I can come all the way down to boom. And I can paint. Oh, let's see what's going on here. My folder. Okay, where is my, I don't want metal roughness. Come on, snap to, snap to. Okay. And that's actually not affecting enough, so I'm gonna do this. And I can actually paint out some of this via dirt, so we don't see a lot of those scratches. So it's slow because it's a dirt brush, but if I were to go into a basic brush, I could be able, I could get rid of all of those scratches, okay? Or I could yet again go to, it's a white mask, I'm gonna add a generator, add a generator and go to dirt. And now it's gonna mask out some of those scratches just based on the map that I put in there. So we have a dirt and I can turn this down. So do I wanna make more of those scratches come through? None, you can see it. Oh, let me see if I can get a better image for you. There we go, scratches. Let's actually turn these scratches a little deeper. There we go, cool. Just for viewing, if I'm up here and I want to, ma you can see that my procedural is now masking in an uneven manner. You can also use a noise or a purlin noise or something, but now we have this. And now with very little effort, not saying this looks realistic, but with very little effort, I was able to create a base. And in that base, I was able to add all of this damage done to this worn object with very, very little work. And now there's still a lot that I don't like, like that is too much gone off the corners. There's too much that you can see that's just repeating that I don't like. So I could go in and edit this further by hand or procedurally. So with that, it allows us a very, 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 very flexible, customizable way of editing everything that we've done here. So this, all this workflow can be applied throughout everything. And I have yet to actually go in and paint anything with a brush. I didn't paint a single scratch or any rust. I used a non-destructible workflow of fill layers and masks and folders to give me something that looks like this. And there is plenty more that can be done. We can use projections. We can go deeper into this. We can use... We didn't even talk about going into filters and blurs or anything else, but this would be a very quick down and dirty way to get started in Substance Painter. From importing your object to UV, to making sure that you bake the maps so you can use procedural techniques. We talked about the difference between a standard layer that you draw on that is non-editable, a full fill layer which impacts everything and allows you to edit after the fact. We talked about editing pass-throughs of layers and how the layer stack works. What's on top overwrites the bottom. You talked about what you can edit if we want to edit the height of any of these or just the color. If we wanted to just turn the color of that handle off, we could. We could turn it on or be a somewhere between. We talked about how to view just the height information or just the base color so you can edit it and know which, what you're editing since you're editing in a 3D view. We talked about the power of masking and how by using a mask, you can actually edit specific points of this object without having to use an ID map. I did use an ID map, but I, wasn't, I didn't have to use it because I was able to easily manage masking without using an ID. We talked about folders and how masking folders and adding folders can allow you to have a very large layer stack for just the grenade base all in here. And you don't have to worry about individual masks that just cover this area. The folder handles that and you can actually apply masks more deliberately to affect the texture that's being put on. 
we talked about dragging materials onto your object and how you can edit those materials to see what you like. Like this right here, I can go in here and I can edit the color. You can also go to Smart Materials, which gives you more options and more editable properties, more so than an actual material itself. And most importantly, what makes Substance Painter so powerful is generators. You can procedurally generate and procedurally edit every single facet without ever having to go in and hand brush something. So overall, that is an entry level beginner's guide to Substance Painter. Thank you for stopping by. I will be creating further videos, shorter videos by far, that will help address each one of the things that we covered in here into greater detail. But thank you guys for watching.